Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Kikoya is in the building! Yeah, hell yeah. Yes, sir! Brother, how are you doing? I appreciate you joining. Sure, uh, I'm pretty good. Excellent, excellent. Uh, for those that may not know you or your music, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Okay. Um, Louis Kikoya, Philadelphia, PA. Started off with, you know, usual local band, Making Out Medusa, Philadelphia, PA, once again. Uh, from there on, The Bunny, The Bear, up until maybe 2020, maybe, the, you know, off and on. Uh, from then on to Vampires Everywhere for a little bit, and now, ASD. On on the, the Wikipedia, it says that you're still the touring guitar player for The Bunny, The Bear. So, <laughs> uh, me and Matt have a special bond. So, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I get him out of some shitty situations. Okay, Matt. We had Matt on a long time ago. He's a really cool dude. I think at the time, if I recall, he was preparing to to promote and announce uh, the project with his wife, which I don't recall the, the name of the project. But uh, Louis, it is a pleasure having you on, man. What is it like uh, having since joined a Skylet Drive? Can you can you recall the moment that I'm assuming Jag hit you up and was like, "Bro, I need you. I need you in the band. Can you just talk about that moment?" Okay, so we'll talk about that specific moment. Uh, originally, I reached out to him, and I reached out about the Signals project. You know, I got I got around to listening to it, and I was just like, this is something different. I remember growing up, you know, in the in the punk scene, so like, I took a listen. I'm just like, this is something I haven't done before. Like, you know, going out on stage and playing this type of music. Let's try to give it a shot. Maybe he's looking for members, and I hit him up. You know, specifically just asking for that. Um, well, did he, he know who you were, or was he familiar with with your playing style or anything? Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I do. I can tell you this. I did try out for Skylet back in 2015 when he was originally looking for, you know, the guitars, the basses, with uh, with Nick Miller. Okay. But uh, obviously that didn't fall in my on my lap right then and there. Uh, but I think that might have something to do with it as well. So he probably did some research. Was like, oh, maybe you know. I think I came across this video before, but seven years later, here I am. Based on your background behind you, it looks like you are a diehard horror film fan. Oh yeah, I got Michael everywhere. Uh, that is awesome. Have you ever have you ever gotten okay. to? Do you ever go to like like horror cons or anything? And have you ever got to meet any of the Michaels? No, not at all. Dang. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm a I'm a homebody for most most of the part. I got you. I assuming the trivia later will be somewhat about a horror movie, but I do want to I do want to play um, something from. Making out with Medusa, and I noticed that you were you were the front man in this project. Is it weird to kind of give up the duties of full time vocals and and step back and do partial vocals, guitar? Or do you do you miss being the the front man mainly? Well, I'll be honest. Uh, I started off as clean and guitarist on Making Out with Medusa. We went through several vocalists around the time. Uh, I think about maybe two or three. Until I decided to say, you know what, it's, it, it might be better just to step down, find a guitarist who can play the, play all the parts, and then just take over the front ramp role. Very cool. Well, let's jam. Let's jam curtain call because uh, I was kind of going through some of the older ones earlier, and this one kind of stood out to me. If that's okay. Yeah. So, so similar question regarding vampires. How did how did you uh, end up joining them? Uh, I think I met Michael Vampire. I think around 2012 when he was doing, you know, his uh. The goth industrial, I think it was the the Bloodhound album. Okay, and, and yeah. you guys just clicked, hit it off real quick. Uh, I mean, being the uh, the local artist trying to get your name out there, I was just going doing my thing, talking to new uh, people here and there. Being the annoying kid that's just like, yo, I'm trying to get on the scene too. <laughs> but uh, I think I revisit conversation with him 2015 when DGA was a thing. Not that there's not that they're not. But it was more, most, more so recently when he announced that Vampire, Vampires Everywhere was coming back out. When I was okay. just like, oh, okay, cool. Um, we played, uh, Bunny the Bear and Vampire played um, Summit Fest back last July. And from then on, that's where we decided to open conversation again, you know, see where things went. Very cool. Uh, JB, what questions do you have for Louis? Yeah, um, any of the, the newer songs that have been, you know, coming out with Skylet Drive, 
Uh, are you responsible for any of these or are you or are you more of just someone like a collaborator and just coming into them? Yeah, more so a collaborator. I give all credit for, to Jagman and Kent. They took those into their matters. And then it was a little after when he was just like, we want you a part of this. This is how we're going to announce you guys. And okay. Yeah. Is there is there plans for future singles where you're actually providing the the guitar riffs? Um, we'll see. <laughs> I don't want to give too much out, but uh, okay. There, we got to leave some secrets for yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. later. Like, if, if, if I drop it all here, you know, you guys won't be excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's jam. Let's jam. Sucker, which I know you're in this video for sure. You're playing on it. And then we'll do some trivia. Actually, before we before we play this, uh, regarding the trivia, did you bring some hot sauce? I got my boy special hot sauce right here, the gin. Um, Ooh, I've never even seen that one. Especially made by uh, Mike Rizzuto. He's also he's guitarist for Kissing Candace. Oh, okay, yeah, we were he familiar with them. And did uh, the Way of the Bear every now and then too, and we have a special bond just as well. We're just as weird as each other. Sometimes he gets on my nerves, I get on his nerves. <laughs> Got it. But today I brought that one. He he's a fucking absolute killer with it. And is it is it fairly hot? Like there's some ghost pepper stuff in there, some yeah, some scorpion. I literally asked him. I was like, you need to tell me what's in this. And he's like, I don't want to give it all away. But he gave me some of the insights, and I was like, gotcha. So just gonna... think my tongue. Just think my tongue in there is just like, Ugh. yeah, it's gonna be hot. Uh, before <laughs> before we play it, uh, and we do the trivia, what what movie would you say you've seen the most? Where if I ask you. Uh, a trivia question about this particular movie, which I'm assuming you're going to pick a horror movie, uh, uh, that you will not get stumped. Interview with the Vampire. Oh, wow. We've never had anybody say that one before. Was Brad Pitt? <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that movie in years. Okay, give me a second to look up some and we'll play Sucker. Gotcha. Louis, of all, of all the bands and live shows that you've played over the years, give me the absolute worst live experience ever. Everything went wrong at this show. <laughs> God, oh, there's so many, but I think most <laughs> recent, most recent, and I think anyone else will agree with me uh, in that band. Vampires Everywhere in Denver. Uh, this was back last year, around October, maybe. Um, everything went good. You know, we had our normal sound check. We were the headliners. Uh, the show was going great. Uh, for some reason, in, during the middle of our set, I'm talking maybe second, third song, guitars start to get cut off. Um, Freaking bag tracks were going like up and down, up and down. Eventually the bag tracks stopped. It was a very frustrating time for the members itself. We we're looking at each other like, what the hell is going on? And you know, Michael made the final decision where it was just like, this is this is absolute unacceptable. Like so it was like the house mixer screwing up or I honestly I, I couldn't even I couldn't even I don't even know. I Some, heard something was going wrong yeah, for sure. We heard so many different things, but a lot of a lot of people were just pointing at uh, sound guy at the time. But again, I don't know. I was too busy in the in the groove. And then... right. Well, let's see if we can stump you and get you to take some of this hot sauce. Here we go. <laughs> in interview with the vampire, what is the name of the actor or actress, not their actual real name, but in the movie, who sets fire to Luis de Pont de Locke's house? Who sets fire to the Luis Luis de Pont de Locke's house in the movie? Himself. That is correct. Yeah, he yeah. sets his own house on fire. Well done. All right, so I'm doing some hot sauce. That's awesome. Of which I don't have any hot sauce right here. I forgot it. I gotta go grab it. Are you familiar with what a shoey is? We're not going to ask you to do it, but are you familiar with what it is? Assuming you're putting your drink or your hot sauce inside the shoe, you're taking it? That is 100% correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> JB, yeah, ask, ask one more question yeah. real quick. I got to go run and grab the hot sauce real fast. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, when it comes to your, your bands that you started listening out to, and I'm saying like 16 years old and on, what has been influencing you the the most? <laughs> so uh, I try to narrow it down to like two different crossovers. And people, when I tell people this, they're like, I don't like for the music you play. I just I would I would never imagine. So I always tell them like uh, AFI. I'm a huge Davey Havoc fan. 
Ooh. You know, vocally, uh, everything he's ever done, like even even aesthetics. Um, and then there's Jack White. <laughs> I, I, I he's weird. I like weird. <laughs> weird is amazing. Good. Weird so is good. Infused, I guess you could say those two infused makes me. <laughs> where where of all again of all the shows that you played, where uh, has a, like a particular special place that you played that uh, you were just you were just like wow music has brought me to this country or this city and you you just had it on your radar like you always wanted to play there um i mean warp tour uh incarcerations uh, <laughs> recent most recently i think it was the earth day birthday last year with uh you know it was a handful of like the dad rock bands like uh 10 years uh fozzy i'm a you know i'm a big wrestling fan so seeing chris jericho face to face was pretty cool hey. <laughs> yeah uh shine down yeah, that's, so that was a big one. So this is probably a good sized crowd for that one, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, I mean the the festival itself was just huge. You know, we like I said, there was even some amateur wrestling in the mix. It was it was pretty cool just to be around it, check it out, meet new people as well who kind of knew who you already were by the the black paint or just your look. They're like, you just stick out compared to most people. Where you're from, or what are you doing today? I feel like I would get beat up by the internet if I did not ask at least one question about this. But uh, not. I know that um, you're obviously with Jag in a Skylet Drive. But is it is it weird that there's that there's two Skylets right now to you? And what is your stance on that? Uh, okay, so I mean, I feel more so for like the diehard fans. I think you get the best of both worlds. You know, you get Jordan, you get the original lineup. And you get Jag, who carried on, you know, Skylet for many years after Jordan departed. Many, many years. Me, yeah, me personally, I mean, I don't have beef with these guys, uh, the original members. That's not my place to say anything about it. It's not my fight. But I'm also guilty by association, obviously. But uh, I, I think, I think, I, me, for me as a fan, like I said, I, I grew up with both. I think it's pretty cool. I, you know, I would hope that eventually, just like. Um, Craig and Ronnie did do like a bird of hatchet type of thing and you know just hash it out and just do it for the fans. Squash you know the mean? beef tour. Yeah, yeah. Do it for the fans. They would love to hear they would love to see it uh, just both vocalists just be like, damn, all right, then we got it's got the drive with everyone in. Like that would be, be awesome. Cool. That would yeah, be yeah. awesome. Fuck the drama, let's get it going. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, like, we hope we hope it happens someday for sure. Um can, let's see. Never, it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm saying you can never say never. True. You never say never. Uh, what what song is the hardest song in your live set to play regarding Skylet? <laughs> um, well, for me, you know, I don't do much leads. I focus more on screams and, you know, leads get sauce back and forth. I would probably say Knights of the Rounds. Okay. Uh, just the intro along with doing some vocals, it's it's kind of hard to focus. You have to put your mindset in a different place just to have your hands to do one thing, your mouth to do another, and your mind to just be completely blank. Because if you focus on either your hands or your mouth, you're going to mess up one one or the other. So, like, <laughs> take it out take it out of mind and just go, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, your, next, your next trivia, which is the last one, I'm, my second attempt to try and stump you. Here we go. In Interview with the Vampire, Louis and Claudia journey to France to seek other vampires. Where do they first encounter some? Now you don't got me there. <laughs> I got you? Yeah, I think you got me. <laughs> it says they first encounter them at a theater. It says they attend a stage play and per, uh, perform by vampires that inhabit the theater. That's what it says the answer is. Well, technically, technically, Louis found one under the bridge. Loophole? Listen. What? Loophole? <laughs> Loophole. I'll still, I'll uh, still spin the wheel for you. After that play, under the bridge. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your word for it because it's been a long time since I've seen it. So, if it's okay with you, let's both do some hot sauce. Wait, let me know. I'm gonna do Hawaiian lava flow. Except I have to put it in a shot glass with whiskey, apparently. Do you do you party yourself as far as uh, alcohol, marijuana, anything like that? Uh, alcohol. I no drugs in my system whatsoever. Even gotcha. though you know weed is pretty acceptable, but uh, I don't do any. Cool. It's not for everyone. That's okay. Yep. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna full screen you right now if that's okay, so we can do some hot sauce. Yeah, do you think? And uh, party on, brother. Hell yeah. Kick it back one more time. Let me get this in here. So I'm doing Hawaiian lava flow. 
I'm ready whenever you are. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Woo! Yo, he badass. Woo! Now ask him the hardest question of the day while he's suffering. JB. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to um, any future performances, are we allowed to know or anything that you're allowed to tell us? I mean, I think it's already out, already out there. Why our 15 year, year anniversary? We're always just trying to get some leaks, some leaks, and some some goodies out of everybody that comes on. But so no. the so the 15 year anniversary tour, uh, of which the shows have been going on already, but there's it's going to continue on, I imagine, for in 2023. Yeah, I think we're going to have a different change in uh, maybe set lists. Um, is there is there a song in Skylet's? I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Is there a song in Skylet's uh, Jags version of catalog that you're fighting for to put in the set list? Well, I mean, we, we I think we all equally, you know, throw our suggestions in there. But uh, I think it all come, I, we, I think we're going to do things a little different. We're going to try to do majority of what we want in there, but we're probably going to try to give the fans some opportunities to just like, what would you guys like to hear? Oh, cool. So like a voting system or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I think it's fair. <laughs> where Where have you not traveled in the world that you've got just circled on your world globe, like I got to play here someday. I'll be honest, man. Like I mean, I recently just got my passport, so like for doing this for as long as I've been doing it, it's just like when am I gonna see overseas? Just in general, I love to see Spain, Russia. I mean, uh, Japan, all that. Where are you from originally? Uh, the, PA, Philadelphia. P where Where's your family from? Like your your uh, uh, relatives? Okay, gotcha. Um, I am Puerto Rican slash native. Gotcha. So, you know. Shout out also to Will Ramos, who's also Puerto Rican. So, plug for little coming. Ramos. Hell yeah! yeah we're <laughs> out here killing it. <laughs> what did you think of the uh, the final three Halloween movies that just came out the last like six seven years? One word. And I'm gonna say it in my in one of my favorite actors' uh, accents. Trash. Really? You didn't like them? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I I'll give you this. Uh, the first one was great. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, I think he's dying. It's the Danny DeVito re uh, reference. <laughs> Trash. Trash. Um, so the first one was good. Second one, you know, kind of eh. The third one, garbage. Garbage, garbage. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Halloween 3, Curse of the Witch? Well, I saw, I, I tried to put it in that sense too. I was like, is this kind of like a callback at all? And then I, I, I rewatched it and I it drives me nuts because now I, I rewatched all three and it's just like, I noticed the same fonts in each of those movies. Like I see, I see what it is now, and they gave us the same reaction that most people m most had had when Halloween Three first came out. It was just like, wait, this had nothing to do with Michael Myers at all. Like, f this movie, and I'm just like, well, yeah, you kind of got to go back and rewatch it and know yeah, that it doesn't. It's now, like it's stand. It's like a standalone film. Yeah, as a Halloween fanatic, like if you're into the, the like Halloween spooky season, you have to watch that movie and be like, okay, now I feel all right with it because it's a tradition, traditional Halloween movie. What what horror film has scared you the most when you were young? <laughs> oh damn, I, I'm I'm gonna have to take it back to uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Way back, way back. <laughs> 2003. I think I gave my parents so much trouble for like two weeks. I was like cold sweat shaking, couldn't sleep. It was terrifying. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so no no chainsaw side jobs for you in the future, I imagine. <laughs> I could now be okay with it, but it's just like, even like the details in Leatherface's mask in 2003 was just phenomenal. Was, yeah, who wouldn't be installed fear? When you were when you were in let's say high school or even younger, what what guitar player just blew your mind? Let's go even younger than that. So much to the point of where you were like, "That's what I want to do." And then you you pick up a guitar, you pick up a vocal mic, you test out your vocals. What what artist when you were younger inspired you? Um, like I said, I'm gonna have to take it back. Way back. Um, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say a little bit of a uh, Sum Forty One, a little bit of Good Charlotte. And believe it or not, a, a, a transplants, rancid, like it's yeah, punk like, days, good yeah, old punk I, days. I, I I found my love in like Tim Armstrong and how he did his thing, and he was just like so nonchalant, so chill, and he like no fucks given. He was just done. 
Let's do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, JB, we've got time for one or two more questions. What are uh, final two questions that you have for Louis? Mine would be, um, when it comes to just music, um, I know a lot of people have their agenda. Is there a certain agenda that you're following for yourself or are you just more, you know, flowing with, you know, the flow of life? I would say more so the flow of life. Like I said, I, I grew up playing guitar, you know, six, seven years old, shyly up until middle school where I actually was able to showcase like what I can do. And even then that was like, that was more like a, I'm, I'm, I'm an outcast. So like being in school in Philadelphia, it was more like, oh, well, he's the goth kid, the only goth kid in school. So like, um, I learned from that age going up to play multiple different genres. And, you know, post hardcore metalcore being my favorite, but I, I'm, I'm into everything. I'm also, like, real deep on industrial synth pop. Like, so I like, I like to experiment. What is, uh, what's a genre that you guys are in your, in your touring van and this genre comes on and you're just, you're just reaching over everybody and saying, no, not that. And you just turn it off. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, country. like, do you jam? You, yeah, uh, most people I would say, yes. most, most metal heads are like, oh, country or yeah, dude, I mean, bluegrass or something like don't that. Get me wrong. Like, I'm, I'm one of those kind, kind of guys where it's just like, if it passes, it's acceptable. But like, majority of my head is always at like, no. But there are some artists where it's just like, okay, this, I can get down with this. I can get, I, there's I, a couple, I got... there's a couple I can get down with too. I, I agree with you. Uh, my final question for you, sir, and it is actually a quite serious one. We ask almost everybody we have on the show this final question, but uh, what is it's a two part one. What is a, a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has given you over the years that kind of open your eyes and make you take your, your career a little bit more seriously? Or when you were just starting off, maybe in Medusa or a high school project, a terrible mistake you made that you don't want a starting up band to make? Well, you said it's a two part question. You can answer uh, either or both. It's up to you. Okay. So for me, it was more, uh, my temper got in the way of a lot of things. And, you know, from time to time, it still does. Um, but I also went about things the wrong way, you know, and in today's world, being a, in a local band, you're competing with other with other bands and they're not giving you the benefit of the doubt. It's just like, we should all be doing this together. We're, instead, we're looking at each other like, oh, well, that band sucks. Well, okay, that band sucks. And that will always drive me into like, okay, well, as long as they don't say nothing to me personally, we'll, we'll be okay. But then there's been times where it's like, okay, now they're pushing the envelope. Now I got to unleash the demon. And I hate to do that, but like, sometimes you got to put people in their place. And that's where I kept fucking up. And, you know, there was Medusa for a little bit was one of the most hated bands in Philly. And, and, like, and not just because of me, it's just as, as, as a whole. It was just like, oh, well, that band sucks. Like, I don't know why we, are we why, why they're always like co headlining or why they're doing this, why they're doing that, why they're part of this lineup. But we were here. We brought the people. We were, we were here. <laughs> um, as far as influential goes, I mean, I would always tell people, you know, you might think this isn't worth it now. But, like, nothing ever comes, you know, in the tip of a finger. Right. You have to work your way up, and you're going to you're gonna have some, some down steps. But that doesn't mean stop right there and, you know, find your next um, occupation. Just go ahead. Just keep moving forward because you never know who you're going to talk to that's going to open doors for you. And that's how it happened for me. You know, like, one conversation started it all. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Louis, we appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much for joining uh, sure. I, I I don't think there's going to be any more Michael Meyer movies now that they've concluded <laughs> it. But you never know; the dude never dies, so maybe they'll 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 we'll figure out something. Right, have you seen Terrifier? I have. What do you What are your thoughts on Terrifier? But the I mean the first I mean pretty gruesome. Yeah, pretty gruesome. I, I think it's one of those movies where like you don't even have to have a plot. Right. It, it's damn good. It's just the kill scenes are just crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 impressive. We need more horror movies like that where they're just the yeah. plot just thrown out the window and it's like I'm just gonna kill forty people as terribly as we can and torture them and just call yeah. it a film. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the man never died, there's a part two. Bam. Exactly. <laughs> well, Louis, stay safe on the road. Tell Jag we said what's up. He's welcome back anytime, as well as you, sir. Uh we yeah. appreciate you uh spending some time with us. And uh sure. we look forward to uh the new singles coming out. In the, in the future for for Skylet and whatever project you're involved in. But, dude, you're awesome. Thanks for doing the hot sauce with the trivia. We appreciate you know. it. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Kekoya! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Did I get it right? I got it right. Okay. <laughs> Have an awesome day, brother. We appreciate it. 
Take care.